Jesus is the answer for the world today. Good morning, everyone. Pastor Esther here with another devotional. We are continuing our 30 Saturdays through the Bible. We are on week 25. We are almost done. And we are continuing our survey of the New Testament. Last week, we looked at one of the parables that Jesus taught. Um, Jesus used parables as his teaching device to convey principles and truths about God's kingdom and God's ways. Now we're going to talk about Jesus's death. You know, it's so interesting when I think about Jesus's purpose. Um, he was born to die. Um, his death is really the crux of all that he came to do. Um, without Jesus's death and subsequent resurrection, we would have no forgiveness of sin. There would be no way for us to have relationship with our Heavenly Father. So as believers, the cross should fundamentally um, be the epitome of why we live for Jesus, why we live for God. And we're going to see that in a moment. Um, this morning, I, if you would, turn with me to Romans chapter 5. Um, in this passage of scripture or this chapter of the Bible is one of my favorite scriptures of all time. Um, for me, this scripture has been the defining verse of my faith. Um, it is a constant reminder of God's goodness and love to me. So I, I'm really excited to mention it again. I probably mention it a lot. <laughs> all right. So if you would follow me, I'm going to read from of uh, Romans chapter five from verse one. Um, and I'm reading today from the King James Version. So it says, <coughs> excuse me, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. That's a word. <laughs> Let's continue. And patience experience and experience hope. And hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commanded his love to us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if we, excuse me, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. All right, so let's bring that in and break it down. Um, in the Gospels, we see um, the description and the narrative of Jesus's death. Jesus was um, lied upon. He was spit upon. He was beat. He was accused. Um, he was tortured and he was killed. And what was the point of Jesus dying? Well, Jesus needed to take upon himself all of God's wrath. The wrath that you and I should have taken because guess what? We always fall short of God's grace. What does that mean? It basically means we sin. We fall short of doing what is exactly perfect and holy that would be ultimately pleasing unto God, our maker and our creator. And so God's love for us in God's goodness, in his holiness, in his justice, in his faithfulness, as it sees in verse eight, I love another translation that says, but God proves his love. God shows his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so through Jesus's death, if we go back to verse one, 
it says that therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So what does this mean? Because we believe in Jesus Christ, because we believe in the fact that he is God and he came in the form of man and he died on the cross for our sins to pay the pun to take upon himself the punishment that we deserve as verse 11 tells us by whom we now have, excuse me, by whom we have now received the atonement. Jesus atoned for our sins and rose up on the three days later. Because we have this faith, we are always at peace with God the Father. We are always at peace with God the Father. And what I mean by that, it means that positionally, right, we have peace with God. This means that we can come boldly into God's presence. This means that we can have relationship with God. The Bible talks about the fact that we were enemies of God. Like, just imagine that. You and I, in our sin, we were enemies of the one who spoke and this world came to be. But he came down and he proved his love for us by dying for us. You know, when Paul was writing this, he's painting a picture for us that in verse 6 and 7, like, hey, listen... You guys, maybe for a righteous person, by our standard, some one, maybe one may, may die, like even hardly. Maybe for a good person, someone may even dare to die. But we were enemies of God and he came down. He humbled himself. It tells us in Philippians 2. And he was obedient to the death, to death, to the death on the cross. How great is the father's love for us? And he proved that by being our atonement. You know, the Bible goes on to say that <laughs> we are again justified by his blood, that we have been saved from God's wrath because of what Jesus did for us. Thank you, God, for the cross. This cross allows us, as it says in Romans 8, to be heirs with Christ Jesus through Jesus's death and his ultimate resurrection we have been called sons or become sons and daughters of God when we believe in his name. You know, it's so important that as believers, we remember the cross. Um, we need the cross to always be before us because the cross is a reminder of God's love towards us. And when we have the cross before us, then we can live daily for Jesus Christ. Um, as I was uh, reading this devotion, I was just thinking about the cross. I was like, you know, the, the cross is our weapon for living in a world that is day by day turning away from God. The cross is a reminder for why I can pick up my own cross daily and follow him. Like we mentioned last week, the cross is a reminder of how much God loves me, especially in those moments where we might feel alone. We might be feeling rejected. We might be feeling not good enough. We might be feeling incapable. Uh, we might be feeling condemned or we might be struggling in our sin. And it's like, man, I've messed up. But we have to remember the cross. We have to remember that. Jesus died for us while we were sinners because he loves us. So now that we are in him and he's alive, how much more life do we have through God, through Jesus Christ? Um, and we can constantly engage or constantly access um, that life that is in Christ Jesus, honestly, through three main ways. The reading, the study, and meditation of the word through prayer and through worship. And when we are steadfast with that, when we are consistent with that, when we do it daily, we're gonna live a life that is full and filled with God's glory and his goodness. Now, that's not to say that we won't have tribulations or we won't have challenges or problems, but even in our problems, right? We are living victorious because of the fact that we are full of the life that came through Christ because he died on the cross and he rose again. So my thing is, how should I respond? Um, and I always think about Romans 12. When I know <coughs> verse one and two, that Jesus died for me while I was pretty bad, <laughs> while I was messed up, while I was a liar, while I was rebellious, while I was disrespectful, 
You know, while I was rampant in my thought life and I was sinning against God and I was adulterous and I was lustful and I was filled with jealousy, all these things that we know we shouldn't do when I was idolatrous, like when I have put things above God, Jesus came and he died for me. And, and guess what? He died for you. And so how do we respond to this amazing and overwhelming love of God? Well, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So my reasonable response, my reasonable uh, service unto God for this great love that he's bestowed upon me. The fact that when I believe in him, I'm at peace with the creator of the universe. The fact that when I believe in Jesus Christ, I am filled with his Holy Spirit, that God, the, the almighty God, the infinite God comes and dwells inside of me. Well, I need to present my body, present my life as a living sacrifice unto the God, holy, acceptable, and we can even go on to verse 2 of chapter 12 where it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. We can do all of this when we remember the cross, when we remember the depth and the breadth and the width of God's love for us, that while we were sinners, he died for us. And through Jesus' sacrifice, through his blood, we attained atonement. Through his sacrifice and his death, God's wrath against us was appeased. And now we are at peace with God the Father. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. So I want to encourage you this week. Let's respond to God and his amazing sacrifice. Bye.